Jimbo Paris, and you are listening to the Jimbo Paris Show. All right, how's it going, everyone? Jimbo Paris here. Welcome back again to the Jimbo Paris Show. So today we have Matthew Harms, ghostwriter, famous coach. He is very focused, I would say, on the idea of career involvement, you know, improving one's career and sort of just helping you kind of become sort of the best version of yourself when it comes to general career readiness. But yeah, let's see what he has to say. Hey, Jimbo. How's it going, man? What you up it's, to? Everything's fantastic. How about you? Good, good. I like the shirt. Looks good. Ah, thank you very much. I, I dressed up for you. <laughs> if you catch my podcast, I'm um, usually just in a hoodie. All right, all right. So this show is going to be all about you. So I think the first question I'm going to begin with is kind of tell me something that is interesting about yourself. I guess the most interesting thing I can think of is what I'm doing now, ghostwriting, was an accident. Never intended to be a ghostwriter, never even realized it was a real thing until the pandemic happened and someone convinced me to write a book for them. Okay. And what are you currently doing right now? My main thing is the ghostwriting. So I do my own writing uh, on the side, but I help business owners, entrepreneurs, really get differentiated from their competition by putting their knowledge, their expertise, their experiences down into a book. All right. All right. And how did this all begin? So I've been writing since I was a kid. Growing up in the Bronx, I was told that's not a real job. You've got to go to college. You've got to get a degree. But that was pretty much where the advice stopped. So I went to college because it was better than the option of having to move out, got a degree in finance, figured I'd work on Wall Street, make a ton of money. And unfortunately, that's not really the way it works because with only a bachelor's degree, you don't qualify for those higher level jobs, wound up getting sucked into a 20 year career in retail financial services, doing anything and everything you can imagine, um, selling insurance, financial advice, uh, working in banks. Until 2017, I decided to get back to writing. I wrote my first book, Employed a Career Readiness Manual, which was really for younger people looking to start out in life and how to set them up for figuring out what they want to do. And then once they've done that, how to interview properly, put their best foot forward, give them the most chance for career success. The next year, I wrote my second book, Grow Up, No Really, which was all about the things I didn't learn in college and thought I should have. Uh, for the money that I spent. And from there, I decided to quit my job and go to work in New York City public schools on a part-time consulting basis, teaching sixth, seventh, and eighth graders how to use writing as a form of social emotional learning, right? Mm -hmm. So basically use writing to handle your emotions instead of violence. What I wasn't getting in terms of fulfillment at my other jobs, I got, it was a huge pay cut, but then the pandemic happened, lost the job completely. So now I had no income. Um, like many other people, I was scrambling, trying to figure out what I could do. So I joined every networking group you could imagine, mastermind group, business development group. And I met a gentleman who was already an Amazon bestselling author. He needed a second book written and didn't have the time. And that was when I learned that ghostwriting is actually a real profession. All right. And this whole social, emotional writing, I find that quite interesting. Can you kind of get into that a little bit? Yeah, so there's a lot of science behind the therapeutic aspects of writing. When we write, it helps take a lot of what we're carrying with us out of our heads, out of our hearts. You know, we're, it's not to say that's fixing the problem, but just getting it on paper, that there's like this energetic release where you're not carrying it with you anymore. And it's, it's proven really effective in journaling, a lot of therapists use it, uh, but especially for younger people who don't necessarily always have someone to talk to um, or maybe don't feel comfortable talking or expressing themselves, putting down what they're thinking and feeling on paper really allows them to, to not resort to the violence that comes when you keep something pent up inside for too long. 
Okay. And has this been useful for you or maybe the people you've coached too? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, I've had several clients, um, especially the ones that I coach. Uh, it happens with the ones that I do the writing for as well, because we're still taking the knowledge and information from their head. So they're, they're getting it out there. Uh, but the people I've coached who have written their own books, I consistently hear how much of a relief it was to know that everything they've had in their head, all the knowledge that they carry every day is now on paper and that they can share it with a wider audience. Okay. And when it comes to a wider audience, you know, as a coach yourself, how do you sort of promote yourself to a broader range or a broader group of people? Really, my focus is on coaches and consultants, also public speakers. They, they tend to be the three careers that have the most knowledge or, or have the most interest in sharing stories. Um, that's why they do what they do. So I specifically target successful coaches and consultants. Um, LinkedIn is my, is my primary platform. I'm blessed that most of my clients wind up hiring us for second and third projects, referring us to other coaches and consultants that they know um, based on the experience they've had with us. And really, it just all starts with the question of, do, do you have a story to share? And honestly, everyone has a story to share. It just comes down to, is now the time to share it? And what is their desired outcome from sharing that story? Mm -hmm. Okay. And when it comes to sharing that desired outcome to other people, um, what sets you apart from other coaches out there, maybe in the same field that you're in? I can only say what my clients have told me because I've never worked with another ghostwriter to compare. But from what I'm told, what helps me build those relationships is my ability to be empathetic, to listen, to understand. The biggest part of ghostwriting isn't actually the writing. It's the listening and being able to ask great questions that get people talking about what they know, doing it without judgment, doing it in a way where they're comfortable, they feel safe, and letting them know that nothing is going to make it out into the public world without their final approval. Right. So just because someone tells me something in one of our meetings does not mean that it's going to wind up in the book if they don't want it there. And as a coach, what was sort of your most satisfying moment or the moment that made you think, ah, this was my calling. This was what I was supposed to be doing all this time. I would have to say one of my clients whose book we published earlier, the, it was like two or three months ago, we worked together for just under a year. You know, normally if I'm ghostwriting a book, I, I'll yeah. get it done in six months. If I'm coaching someone, it really depends on how much they're able to put in. I, I've had one client get it done in three months. Usually it's about eight months to a year. Um, but after the year, she was so relieved. I could not believe that this, this book she wanted to write for, probably 10 years was finally done. It was out there. You know, we helped her direct her to people who could do her cover for her really just leveraged our industry knowledge outside of the coaching, right? Cause I don't, I don't do cover design. I don't do a lot of the other elements. I try to just focus on the writing. So to see how excited she was and to be talking about writing a second book and introducing us to people who want to write books, that was really that moment where I you know I can write. But to see someone else walking away feeling like they can start their next book on their own was incredibly rewarding. Hmm. And maybe you could kind of go more into your book, you know, the idea of Grow Up. What's that about? So Grow Up was written after I realized, after I graduated in this career for however many years, I started thinking back, like, how did I get here? I forget what the exact moment was. But I'm working in the bank, we, we do mortgages, we do all of these different things. And I realized in college, they never took me through whether you should buy a home or rent a home. Like what's a better decision? They'll teach you how to figure out a mortgage payment by hand, but is that really helpful in life? There was never any life skill courses on, is it better to lease a car or buy a car? When you're evaluating leases, when you're reading contracts, like things that you're going to need to know when you get out of school and start 
living your life as an adult. Um, the original title of the book was going to be adulting until I realized someone else had it. So I changed it to grow up, but it, it was just eye opening for me. You know, I, I spent probably like most people close to six figures on a college education from a, a fairly reputable school. And I didn't have these basic life skills. And sort of going more into you as a person, what was your ultimate goal as a writer? My ultimate goal for my own writing is really to share kind of like what I'm helping other people do in ghostwriting. I want to share my experiences. I want to open people's eyes to things not having to be the way we think they are, right? So in my example, I was told you have to go to college. You have to get a good job. But I never questioned that because that's what I was told, right? But really, there were a million questions that could have been asked. What, what do I study? What's a good job? Like, what's your definition of a good job? Jimbo's definition of a good job might not be Matt's definition of a good job. And that's what I want people to realize is if you read my book and say, nope, I, I still think that banking career is right for me. Hey, great. I mean, we need people that do that. We need garbage men. We need, we need people who write books. We need policemen. There is, there is no one size fits all solution. So I'm just hoping that someone who reads my book who may be in a situation where I was can take away from it that they don't have to follow the path everyone's telling them to go down. Speaking of garbage men, you know, there's certain garbage men and fighter fighters that make six figures every year. So so that's actually covered and employed because there's this negative stigma around certain professions, right? And... You know, when it comes to ghost writing, you know, have you ever asked someone to write for you? And what are your beliefs on the idea of ghost writing? So I've not needed to ask someone to write for me, thankfully, because I kind of get it done myself. My thoughts on ghost writing originally, when the idea was presented to me, I kind of felt almost like it was a, a cheating. But then I realized that, especially in the nonfiction space, it's really not. Because it's not my words. It's not my messaging. It's the clients. All I'm doing is helping them take it and craft it into a format where it's easily read, digested, and understood by their audience. When it comes to the fiction space, I generally shy away from ghostwriting just because there is a little more... I, if you have an idea, a, a fictional concept that lives in your head... Um, I don't know that I can really bring that to life for you hmm. because it's in your head. Like this is your, whatever you've created. So that's really where we'll focus more on coaching fiction authors. I actually have certain clients will help them build their outline and their plot structure, and then they do the writing. So I've really, my eyes have been open to ghostwriting where I'm, I view myself more as a tool than someone that's helping someone cheat or get an unfair advantage. Okay. Now, when it comes to writing a book, what type of advice could you give to maybe some aspiring authors out here? Okay, this one's simple. And I'm going to say it twice just in case no one's paying attention. Just start writing. Again, just start writing. If you constantly say, I'm going to, I need, uh, but what if no one's going to get out of your head and just start writing? It's amazing what happens when you put the first word on paper. And then I would take that a step further and say, schedule time to write. If you just say, I'm going to write tomorrow, it's never going to happen. You've got to put it on your calendar. You've got to treat it like you would going to your job. You've got to treat it like you would having lunch, making dinner, servicing your car. The things we put on our calendar get done. The things we just talk about never happen. Okay. And... When it comes to writing other topics beyond your field of expertise, would you do anything else beyond autobiographies or those types of things? I think you said fantasy was one of the things you wouldn't usually not do, but what would you do or what wouldn't you So again, fiction, I won't really ghostwrite anything in the fiction space. So it doesn't matter if it's fantasy, horror. Um, I will coach the person. I will help them build an outline, but I'm, I'm not going to do the writing for them. In the nonfiction professional self-development space, there's pretty much nothing I won't touch except medical um, and anything that's really too heavily scientific. Mm. But otherwise, I, I prefer, and actually I won't write finance because I know too much about it. And I personally feel that 
I have such strong feelings about my experience that I can't do someone justice of not tainting their voice with my own opinions and experiences. So I won't touch that for personal reasons, but otherwise, again, I've done cybersecurity, fintech, coaching, personal development, branding, marketing, sales. The less I know about something, the more comfortable I am writing it because it allows me to put myself in the shoes of a reader and ask the questions that the subject matter expert might not realize they haven't fully explained. Okay. And, you know, what is sort of the best thing about writing that may intrigue you or interest you the most about it? The fact that I learn something new every single day with every single client. And you sort of emphasized that before that you tend to write the best about topics that you're not the expert on, which I think is quite the opposite of what I perceive initially. You know, I and I've had clients who at first were hesitant to work with me because I, I wasn't an expert in that. I, I hadn't worked in a certain industry. Um, and my explanation has always been the same. If I know too much about something, I'm not going to see the gaps in the writing because I inherently know what you're writing about. So I, I'm making the connection already. Right. But if I don't know anything about the topic, I'm going to ask you to explain it to the point that you, you feel like you're talking to a fifth grader, which is really the point of the book, unless you're writing a technical manual, which again is where I, I don't want to be involved because that's just, it's not fun anymore. But Books where you're trying to teach people things should be written to the level of a fifth grader. And, you know, what type of advice can you kind of give to any listeners out there? Don't listen to other people, especially people who have not done what you want to do. So I cover this in, in um, Employed, the Career Readiness Manual. If you want to be an astronaut, Surround yourself with astronauts. Ask them questions. Figure out how they got to where they are. Learn from them. Uh, there's, I feel like, a common misconception that people don't want to help other people, and nothing can be further from the truth. The most successful people in the world have no fear of you taking their job or being better than them. If they mentor you, they want you to get to where they're at and be better. But if you want to be an astronaut, you shouldn't be asking the 75-year-old uh, career janitor for advice. Again, not that there's anything wrong with being a career janitor, but they don't know how to get you to be an astronaut. They know how to be a janitor. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the most dangerous part is that there's people that don't know how to get there, but say that they could get you there. Correct. If the person who's telling you they can get you there isn't there, you should really think twice about what you're taking away from that conversation. Now, I think the final thing I want to get into is you also have a podcast and you also have a lot of outlets for people to reach out to. Can you kind of get into a few of those things before we end off this great interview? Yeah, absolutely, Jimbo. Um, so I have the Pen Podcast. We started about two and a half years ago. We're up to 300 plus episodes. We really focus on authors, writers, writing industry professionals, so book designers, literary agents, editors. Um, and, and the whole purpose behind it was to build community for authors and let them know there's other people out there who are struggling um, with all different facets of writing. You know, sometimes it's it's, it's um, imposter syndrome. And what I'm writing is when I'm writing good enough. Um, do I want, how do I publish? What, what should be my next step? Um, so that has been a tremendous help to our community. Um, we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, uh, recently got on TikTok. Um, have my assistant doing most of that because I, I really try not to go down those rabbit holes. My highest and best use of my time is helping people share their message. Uh, you have my website up, so website's a great way to reach us. Um, we're going to be setting up some community rooms in a, um, a platform that one of my military veteran clients uh, founded. So really the goal this year is just to build, keep building community um, and trying to offer as many resources to would-be authors as we can, because not everyone can afford our services, um, but that doesn't mean that there's not ways we can try to give back to help them along. Very 
You've got a website. Do you have any social media or any other places people can reach you out at? Or Yeah, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, they're all pen for hire. Okay. All right. Well, you know, Mr. Harms, it was a privilege having you here. Pen for hire. Check these people out if you want to maybe have some ghostwriting services done or speak with an expert here to maybe learn how to do this craft yourself. Um, thank you again for being on the show. It really was a privilege. No, it was my pleasure. Thank you for uh, for inviting me. I had a blast. <laughs> so uh, just to end this off, we're just going to do a few quick shout outs here. The first one is going to be LifeWork Systems. This is our affiliate and collaborative partner. And essentially, if you want to improve your HR infrastructure and business infrastructure, message me. And this woman can help you out if you're a business of a 100 or maybe more people. Next one is our YouTube channel. Please subscribe to that, ring that bell, and you can get exclusive updates on when the latest episodes are coming out. And then our Roku channel, we're also on Roku TV, so look at us there too. Next one is our Kofi. Please donate to us, give us a donation, buy us a coffee so that this show can continue running ad-free and we can continue giving you great content like this. And final thing, Jimbo Paris Academy. We will be giving out exclusive free courses on how to build your own digital online business, how to train virtual assistants and build your podcast with the lowest costs, with editors, all those other people without me included. You can build an entire business as low as $2,000 a month. So yeah, reach out to me if you want to do that too. All right. So again, thank you for looking at the show. This is the Jimbo Powers Show. Thanks again. Thanks, Jimbo. Thank you for listening to the Jimbo Parish Show. 